Hume. Today we'll be answering and discussing David Hume's approach to God's existence and natural theology. So who is David Hume? Well, David Hume was a distinguished figure in the Enlightenment era and is renowned for his philosophical stances on empiricism and skepticism. These principles profoundly shaped his views on natural theology and the existence of God. Natural theology refers to knowledge of God derived from observed facts about the physical world, unaided by special revelation. Hume's empiricist philosophy, the belief that knowledge comes solely through sensory experience, coupled with his skeptical stance, led him to critically examine the traditional arguments for God's existence offered by the natural theology, namely the ontological, cosmological, and teleological arguments. Firstly, the ontological argument. The ontological argument asserts that, by definition, God is perfect, and since existence is a facet of perfection, God must exist. Hume, however, contested this argument, proposing that one could conceive of God not existing, thereby suggesting that existence is not inherently a component of the concept of God. This refutation reflects Hume's skepticism of metaphysical assertions that extend beyond empirical experience. Secondly, the cosmological argument. When examining the cosmological argument, which says that everything in the universe has a cause, and therefore there must be a first cause, which is God, Hume applies his empirical perspective. He questioned our understanding of causation, arguing that it is merely a habit of mind to associate two events that frequently occur together. But this doesn't necessarily mean one event causes the other. Hence, the cosmological argument, in Hume's view, does not provide a convincing empirical case for the existence of God. Next, the teleological argument, or argument from design, a cornerstone of natural theology, which asserts that the complexity and order in the universe indicate the work of a designer, which is God. Hume challenged this argument noting that the existence of design does not necessarily point to a singular, perfect creator. He argued that it could suggest multiple deities, a powerful but flawed deity, or even a creator using pre-existing material rather than creating ex nihilo. Hume also introduced the concept of disteleology, or instances of poor design which wouldn't be expected under a perfect designer. He suggested that the design argument goes beyond available empirical evidence, undermining its validity as a proof of God's existence. Although Hume's critiques indicate skepticism towards the rational proofs offered by natural theology for God's existence, it is important to note that Hume did not explicitly deny the existence of God. His skepticism was more of an expression of humility about the limits of human knowledge rather than a declaration of atheism. His analyses reveal an insistence on grounding discussions about God's existence in empirical evidence. In sum, Hume's approach to God's existence and natural theology reflects a consistent application of his empiricist and skeptical philosophy. He neither accepted traditional arguments for God's existence at face value, nor did he dismiss the possibility of God outright. Instead, he explored the irrationality and empirical foundation of these arguments, providing insightful critiques that continue to influence philosophical and theological discussions today.